Greetings everyone. Today we're going to explore factoring with difference of squares. Now let's pay attention to those two key words. Difference means we're going to be subtracting. Squares means perfect squares. Like 2 times 2 is 4. 9 times 9 is 81. We do have a foldable for this, so if you have that available, please jump to our difference of squares tab. Now, quick review, you actually already know how to factor what we're doing today. So we've done this in the past where we recognize that this is in standard form. We recognize that our a is one and our constant is negative 49. And so we've been filling in as zero X for our B value, right? And what that's done is made it so when we create our factors, we have to think for a moment about which of those factors can get me to zero. We've set up our two parentheses, our factors of x squared are x and x. Our numbers are seven and seven. And if they multiply to be negative, it has to be one positive, one negative. So the goal today is you can continue doing this, but if you want a shortcut, you can jump from this straight to the answer. Now, if you're a step-by-step -step person, let's talk about how can I do that. Um, so this is on the top half of your note sheet. So first thing, we acknowledge that we have a zero X for this particular example. And then we say what factors of 36 can get me to a zero? a six and a six, one positive, one negative. So as always for your actual steps, first and foremost, with every factoring problem we do, we wanna see if there's a greatest common factor first. Not only because we want everything in simplest form, but because it makes the numbers smaller, it makes it easier. Second, if we're going to use this shortcut to jump from the question to the answer, we have to identify if we have the following pieces. Do we have two terms, two chunks of information? One, two. We do. Do we have, whoops, I don't know what's going on there. Sorry about that. Do we have two perfect squares? Yep, x squared, meaning I can square root it. 36, I can square root it. And do we have a subtraction sign? This little shortcut only works if there's a subtraction sign, hence the name difference of squares. If you have two perfect squares, a subtraction sign in the middle, then you can write your factors in two parentheses. And then you can just check. So it'll always be x minus x plus, and then whatever that perfect square value is broken down. Now let's talk a little bit more about perfect squares. You can make this list super easy off to the side on any piece of work you're doing, right? All we have to do to think through is one times one, two times two, three times three, four times four, five times five, right? We're thinking when you, remember when you did times tables and you had that diagonal pattern? Those were your perfect squares. When you had a five times a five, you had a 25, right? So we're just writing out those times table numbers because it makes it easier to look at, to be honest. I mean, it is mental math, but if it's physically written in front of you, it makes it a little easier. Now, the couple of things that you do want to add to this list that are going to be a little more prevalent, x squared comes from the x times x, right? x squared times x squared can get me to x to the fourth. That can happen. And x third times x third can get me to x to the sixth. So we're also going to have to keep an eye out for what is the degree of the polynomial. All right, let's jump down to the examples. Now we're going to follow this process. Step one, GCF, none. Step two, do I have two terms? Yep. Are they perfect squares? Yep. And I have a subtraction sign. So what we get to do, because we know this, we get to jump straight into an X plus and an X minus. 
And the only thing you have to tell me is if 49 is a perfect square, why is it a perfect square? Because of 7 times 7. Now let's take a look at example 2. Step 1, GCF. Mm, don't have one, right? Step 2, do I have two terms? Yes. Are they both perfect squares? Yes, yes, yes. And do I have a subtraction sign? Yes. Let's set up our two parentheses. Now be careful here. We know it's going to remain a plus and a minus, but notice it says 4x squared. 4 is a perfect square because of 2 times 2. x squared is a perfect square because of x times x. 9 is a perfect square because of 3 times 3. So you're going to have the same binomial with just opposite signs. Let's take a look at example three. It looks a little different, but does it meet the qualifications? Two terms? Yep. Both perfect squares? Yep. Subtraction sign? Yes. So let's set it up. 81 is a perfect square because it's 9 and 9. So just notice I didn't write it in standard form. I didn't need it in standard form. W squared is a perfect square because W times W and then a plus and a minus. Now, let's talk about if I was to write it in standard form. Okay, that can happen. I just want to show you this. Let's say I flipped things around. Right? Well, I wrote it in standard form, but now I don't have a subtraction sign because I could take out a GCF of negative 1. Oh, well, then I have my difference of squares, a w, a w, a 9, a 9, a plus, a minus, with this little negative 1 hanging out front, my GCF. So technically, these two answers are both correct. Let's take a look at example 4. Let's look through our... Essentially, our shortcuts is how I think of difference of squares, to be honest. I have two terms. Perfect squares, yep. Subtraction sign, yes. This sort of shortcut only works if they're perfect squares. 4 times 4 is 16. X times X is X squared. 5 times 5 is 25. And if there is a subtraction sign, it's always a plus minus. Right? If all of those qualifications don't happen, there is no shortcut. There is no possibly way to solve it. Let's look at example five, for example. I have a four x squared, perfect, but a seven, a seven is not a perfect square. And the only factors of seven are one and seven. That's not gonna get me anywhere. So believe it or not, this one is not factorable. Now I'll never assess you on ones like that because I wanna see you factor, um, but it can happen, right? Not every polynomial can break apart into something nice. So keep an eye out for those ones. Now don't forget our first step. We haven't had one like that yet. Step example six, excuse me. I see two terms, but they are not perfect squares. But I can divide a five out of both terms. And if I do that, I have an x squared minus four. Now that breaks down. The 5 hangs out. Don't forget. Don't forget that GCF out front. x squared is x times x. 4 is 2 times 2. Subtraction sign is plus minus. Let's look at number 7. I've got a lot going on here. I definitely need to take out a 2x. If I take out a 2x, I have an x squared minus 36. There, that looks better. The 2x hangs out. x squared is x times x. 36 is 6 times 6. And a plus minus since I have my difference. So keep an eye out for those. I have a lot of students that are like, oh, not factorable. Hold, hold on, right? You got to check for GCF first always. All right, so that's our shortcut for today for difference of squares. Now keep in mind, if you would rather fill in a 0x and factor the way we've already been factoring, please do so. There is 
no harm in doing that because that's what you already know how to do. If this shortcut makes sense to you and it makes it faster and more efficient, then, then that's what it's there for, to make that process quicker. Um, to me, it doesn't matter how you show it. Um, my hope is that you understand what's happening. Um, as always, make sure you check out Google Classroom, see what your task is. Let me know if you have any questions. And until next time, have a good one.